much to talk about today. Very special guest, Delaney Walker, I hear, is standing by. One of my favorite players in all of the NFL has decided to retire. He did it. Um, and we're going to celebrate that with some special moments. I'm really, really excited about it. We've also got a Thursday night football game between the Cardinals and the Saints. Alave is back. And DeAndre Hopkins might be the most valuable player in the league. I'll explain. If you ever watched me on Good Morning Football, you know DeAndre Hopkins, one of my favorites, of course, fighting through uh, adversity of his of his own doing, of other doing, whatever you want to say, but he is back. And uh, as far as I hear, he is feeling fresh, he's feeling good, and he's ready to go. And we all know the big difference he makes in Kyler Murray's life. Thursday night football, New Orleans Saints at Arizona Cardinals. Both teams entering the game at 2-4. and four. And you might think I'm exaggerating, but it really feels like we've got a loser leaves town sort of matchup tonight. And Delaney Walker is maybe listening uh, in the green room here thinking, what, it's so early in the season, don't say that. He's probably right. But to me as a fan, it just feels like these are two underachieving teams that had high hopes coming into the year. And now they're fighting to stay in the race as the Saints head to Arizona to take on those cards. So we have DeAndre Hopkins, as I've mentioned, coming back, six-game suspension. So does it mean a return to the Kyler Murray that we saw in the first half of last season as well? If you look at the numbers, they're crazy. Kyler was a different quarterback before DeAndre got hurt last year, and his struggles have carried over into 2022 as D-Hop dealt with that suspension. Do we have the numbers? I thought we did. No, that's okay. Um, if well, there they are. So if Kyler does pick it up again with Hopkins back in the lineup, uh, I'm not afraid to say this. This sort of sample size, what you're seeing on the screen right now, it proves that DeAndre might be one of the most valuable players in the entire league. And guess what? They're going to need him to hit the ground running. Hollywood Brown going to be out for a month with a foot injury and the new addition, Robbie Anderson, via trade, of course. He's, quote, unquote, extremely limited as he tries to familiarize himself with the new playbook. Could be a spark, could not. So we'll have to see what DeAndre Hopkins has. And we know he has quite a bit, as those numbers showed. And on the other side, the Saints injured. It's really tough. They're struggling. It's going to be a game-time decision here. Mark Ingram's going to join us tomorrow post-game. So stay tuned for that. And it's, you know, Jameis is Andy Dalton. In. They've both been limited all week, and they don't have Michael Thomas. They don't have Marshawn Lattimore. They don't have Jarvis Landry or Andrews Pete. What is going on with the lights are turning on and off in here? I don't know what's happening. They've been scrappy, uh, though, these Saints, as is the Up and Adam show, I would say, through a lot of adversity and injuries starting and staying in every game, but they're going to have to finish the job if they want to stay in the playoff race. Okay, quickly, elsewhere in the league, big things happening. Russell Wilson, uh, the Broncos, a, a decision's going to have to be made, and it keeps getting interesting interesting day by day. Russell Wilson talking about, do we have the tweet? Thank you. The Wolverine blood, right? This is, where did this come from? I don't know. But it seems like he's expecting to be out there on Sunday against the Jets. Meanwhile, Nathaniel Hackett came out and said that it's his decision whether Russell goes or not, which I love to hear. Hackett said Melvin Gordon is starting at running back. He benched him, of course, in the first quarter last week. I'm happy they were able to figure it out and talk and work it out. Uh, but back to Russell Wilson, N no one's going to question his toughness, right? I hope no one's out there doing that. I keep bringing up the injury, and the thing I keep getting back from Twitter from guests on my show is, oh, Eva, I think Darius Butler said this, it's injuries, everyone has injuries. It's almost questioning his toughness, and it shouldn't happen. There's a reason he didn't miss a game until his 10th year in the league, okay? It's not because he never got hurt. It's because he played through a ton of stuff early on. He's a warrior. You can say whatever you want. But right now, he's clearly off. He's severely being affected in his play. And, you know, he's going to, he's an NFL player. He's going to keep saying, I can play, I can go, I have Wolverine blood, I have whatever. It's up to the coach to protect him from himself, protect the team, and give him a chance to heal up. And I like that Hackett saying it's his decision. I have to see some follow through, though. Protect the team, protect Russell. It is not going to get better if you keep running him out there. And if Russell doesn't look right in practice this week, Hackett has to shut him down and do what's best for the team going forward. Okay, we also quickly got the Dak Prescott news. Everyone's curious about this, of course. Uh, my girl, Jane 
Jane Slater hitting the Twitter web to tell everybody that he's medically cleared to play, and that is a wrap on Cooper Rush's awesome run to keep the Cowboys in a great spot in the NFC playoff race. But I think the success of the Cowboys with Cooper Rush, it can't be this like, oh, that was a fun chapter, and let's throw it away. Because they're they're four and one, and it's more than that. There's really a lesson to be learned from how Dallas was winning. The Cowboys were 28% run in the week one loss to the Bucks and Dak under center. Over 50% run with Cooper Rush, a quarterback. Huge difference, win totals, efficiency, all of that. It's simplifying. Running the ball, let's just be honest, it's always been considered the Cowboys' bread and butter. It's what this team has been built to do. And Dak's talent, sort of, it's like this double-edged sword. He's great, but it sort of forces them and traps them into overthrowing and throwing the ball a little bit too much. They air it out and take advantage of his arm, but the latest when they run, as they should, a light bulb should go off, like a push notification should be showing up on these Dallas Cowboys brass and coaches' phones like, oh, we put up a ton of yards last year by throwing the ball over the field. Where did it get us? Not too far. Let's run the ball and see where it takes us. All right, a guy who, who I mean, this guy ran the ball. This guy shook off nine defenders that were on him at all times, uh, and he's joining us right now at Up and Adam Show. <sighs> Delaney Walker officially announces retirement on Tuesday after 14 incredible seasons in the NFL, a three-time Pro Bowler, NFC champion, and as a member of the San Francisco 49ers, a two-time, two-time Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee, and the Tennessee Titans all-time leader in catches, yards, and touchdowns by a tight end. Please welcome Delaney Walker. Hi, Delaney. Hey there. How you doing? It's so good to see you. Oh, are we on the golf course already? I'm on the golf course, man. You gotta enjoy retirement, so I'm on the golf course. Wait, let's see. Give us a give us a view here. That is amazing. Truly retired. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of people out there, so you can't really okay, see. Okay, got, 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 got it. Got it. Got it. So yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. You're doing. Wow, this is amazing. You're doing your thing. I hope people come and ask you for autographs during this interview. Uh, you're smiling, but I'm sure it had to be pretty emotional. Emotional. How does it feel? It was very emotional, uh, but it felt great to finally get it done. Uh, to retire as a Titan for the rest of my life. Uh, that's all that meant to me. So I'm, I'm thankful that the organization put on something great. The fans showed me love. And that's all I can ask for. And so many legends and your old teammates had messages for you. It was awesome. If I gifted you, if I gave you like a picture frame and it was empty and you had to pick one photo from your entire career to put in that, one that told the story and showed the biggest, best moment, what would that picture look like? It'll probably be um, the Cleveland game where all the guys was up uh, next to me and we were doing uh, uh, the shovel dance pretty much when uh, when we get in the end zone, we call it pay dirt. And everyone <laughs> did it. We didn't even we didn't even orchestrate this. Everyone just did it when I did it. So I think that picture shows uh, everything I want to show uh, what my career was. And I was just being a great teammate. I love it. I, I want to show you a play that I – really love and I love it because it is very Delaney Walker and it was 2015 and it's you against the Patriots and what do I mean by very Delaney Walker there is no quit here you y'all are down in this game Delaney the paths are all over you sheer determination plus your gifts your athleticism your speed your strength well, do you remember this Oh, of course, I remember. This is one of my favorite <laughs> plays, to be, to be honest. I think uh, this shows, like you said, no quit. Just the type of player I was. Uh, like you said, we were down, and I still had that fight to oh. be a dog to try to get the game done. So, <laughs> This was you all of the time. And uh, honestly, as a tight end and what you and Vernon did back in, in San Francisco, and then what you, you helped change how the position was played. There are scouts now. There are, People are... are Coaches, they're looking for guys like you that impact the game the way that you do. I, uh, and I've always loved your career. And I, you're very humble. Uh, and I hate it. It's like the only thing I don't like about you because you deserve to, to sort of stunt a little bit. And I saw in your retirement press conference, you said nicely that Wycheck is the best tight end in Titans history. And that's all fine. But Delaney, you hold the records, my friend. Catches, yards, touchdowns. It's okay to flex a little. Indeed, but you know, like I told them, our, our position, the way we played, it was differently. Uh, when he played, he was more like a, a extra lineman uh, that can still catch the ball and run. Um, the, the, the position has evolved a lot, as you said, um, being a hybrid tight end, being a tight end that can play receiver, fullback, um, even myself, return kickoff returns. It, we just played a different position. I would say in this era, yeah, I will probably be that top tight end, but yeah. all around. 
<laughs> all around, I have to give it to Frank. And, I, you know, I just I idolize all them dudes, man. They paved the way for us to be able to play this game and make as much money we do, uh, we are making right now because of them dudes. So It's true. I like that you said you had to put the kick kickoff returns. That was a little flex. <laughs> yeah, I, see, that was a flex. See, that, I flexed for you right there. <laughs> oh, you did, and I liked that a lot. Uh, you're on a golf course right now. You are freshly retired. There's videos on your Instagram, a lot of car racing going on. You describe yourself as a stunt driver. Is this, like, your second career now? What's going on with this? Definitely, definitely. Uh, that's what I'm trying to break into. I'm a rookie right now, so... Uh, I got to break into it. I just got my license to be able to do it. So I'm excited. Uh, oh just really building cars and going out there. I went from one dangerous sport to another dangerous sport. I guess I just need that that feeling. Um, yeah. But I, I love doing it. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about, about the Titans because you did say that you watch every game. So that's an invitation for me to ask you questions. You also said that you won't go to the stadium because you get – more worked up than Rabel does. Like you're yelling at the TV and you, uh, you aren't uh, able to be there. What would it take to get Delaney Walker to a game? Is it a playoff appearance? Is it a Super Bowl in the new dome they build? What will, take you, what will it take to get you back in the building? Uh, me being able to play. No, I'm just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually going to go to a, a game. Uh, I'm going to go to this uh, Sunday game, but I can't sit next to the family because I, like I said, I'm like Rabel. I will cuss, scream, can we cut them, can we get another player, because I want to win. I'm, I still got that attitude like I'm playing when I'm out there, so if I can sit in the suite, I think I'll be great, uh, and for the people who knows how I am and, and know that uh, <laughs> I still take this game very serious. I'm sure you do, and so do the Titans, and a lot of people don't take them as seriously as you do, or as seriously as they should. They're on top of the AFC South. No one is talking about them as usual. Slow start. They have won three straight. What is one thing that you've noticed that's sort of allowed for the turnaround? I think it's Derrick Henry. I mean, I, I, I mean, if you hear any of my audio, I always say, if D hit, if D hands spin, we win, no matter what. If D hands spin, we will win the game. But it's a lot of other girl, guys out there online. You know, they um, they hold down for our quarterback Ryan Tannehill because he, if he got the time to make the passes mm -hmm. to them guys, they can get plays. We've seen it. Um, but they're a tough team. They never give up. We just got to keep finishing and uh, getting them Ws. Just a couple more for you, Delaney. I'm sure you have a tea time to, to, to meet, so we won't take it, but we are celebrating you. Uh, two of your favorite people from your time with the Titans, two guys important to you, are they're having, a, they're having a moment in Atlanta that we need to cheers to. I'm talking about Indeed. Falcons. Yeah, head coach Arthur Smith, who was your former tight ends coach, and Marcus Mariota, uh, and they're coming off a big win over those 49ers, your former team, the one you started your NFL career with. I feel like a lot of people, I know a lot, of people wrote off Mariota after what happened in Tennessee and I know that you're not surprised that he's having success so what was it about him that made you love playing with him so much I mean the guy is special um even though it took it's 10 other guys out there with him even when we lost games he took the blame never pointed fingers but went out there every day and worked his butt off worked his butt off to get W's and that's what he's doing in Atlanta and I, I knew if he had the opportunity to show that he can still play this game at a high level that he'll get that opportunity, and he's showing the world that he still can play, still can run, can throw, and make the plays that he always been making. They got a they got a Bengals game this weekend. I think it's so. Of course, Arthur Smith gets tight. Kyle Pitts, you know, he's got a guy. Are you worried you're gonna lose your? Are you gonna lose your spot on Mariota's favorite tight ends list? Because Kyle Pitts can do that. Uh, no, nah, we can share it. I like Kyle, so we, we can share. But uh, I, it's gonna be hard to beat uh, beat the love me and Marcus have for each other. You know, we. Mm. Uh, we st I, st I started off with Marcus, and I try to do everything I can to make him successful. So, But I know Pitt can do the same thing. So we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm always be there. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tennessee is such a unique and loyal fan base. It's, uh, you know, and I was on Good Morning Football so many years. Whenever I would say anything about the Titans, they were so excited. Whenever I would not say something about the Titans, why aren't you talking about us? So loyal, important to you. What do you want to say to your fans right now? I just want to thank the fans of uh, the Tennessee Titans for showing me so much love. I, I've seen all the love. I've seen all the uh, congratulations. And I thank you guys. I went out there just for y'all to give it all I can. And y'all showed up for me when I, when I had my retirement. So thank you so much. It's amazing. You know, I was on Good Morning Football, and the first jersey I ever got was a Delaney Walker one because they would, you know, all the players, the people we talk about. And, uh, and I know that you know that I championed you. Uh, and I'm... 
I gotta say, I'm, I'm, it's a little sad this morning to, uh, thinking about what I wanted to ask you because there's really nobody like you. And congratulations, I'm so happy for you. And why I cheered you on the way I did had a lot to do with, you know, you, you know, like Taylor Lewan said, you having five guys over you and you still getting open and making it happen, but also what you did in the community. I mean, your Delaney Walker Gives Back Foundation, you were providing educational opportunities, resources for children and low-income families. You have been so outspoken against gun violence. And more than any athlete in any sport ever, I know that you're so passionate about drunk driving and you're behind that. So I just want to say thank you for always being this guy who is, is easy to root for on the field and off the field and uh, the impact that you made. I cannot wait to see what's next, Delaney. Thank you so much. You always supported me, so thank you for that. Thank you. Now go golf. I mean, does your hand hurt from hell? Is your golf game going to be affected by holding the phone? Uh, my, my shoulder, the shoulder is a little terrible. <laughs> I'm trash anyway, but I'm gonna use that as an excuse. <laughs> you're, oh, you'll be again, again. I'm sure you're killing it, and you're saying you're trash. You're the best. And Whitecheck is not a better golfer than you, my friend Delaney Walker. <laughs> enjoy golf, enjoy <laughs> retirement, and we'll talk to you down the line. One of my favorite players to cover in my career, Delaney Walker. We've got more up and out. Adam show after this. I didn't cry. It's a sad one for me. I'm a big fan. Big fan of Lady Walk. We've got more up ahead. Shams is on the show. Gearing up for another huge week of college football. You can get in on the action and win part of $20,000 prize pool. Huh? This is how. It's part of Twisted Tees College Football Picks Contest. And it's free to enter. You'll make six picks and earn points for each correct pick. Sign up today at FanDuel.com. All right, let's bring in Matthew Hamilton. Hamilton, you were on set with me. I remember we were like getting that jersey. And I think what happened is he, he was on my fantasy team for so many. Delaney Walker was on my fantasy team for like a couple of years before I started Good Morning Football. And then I was like, why does he not get any love? And then I think Twitter was like, yeah, he doesn't get any love. And that's how it, I really think that's how it started, right? Yeah, it's true. And I think he was he was really one of the first players that you were all in on and, and really championing on the show. So it was it's an emotional moment to see that come full circle. I am surprised you didn't cry. I got a little I got a little misty seeing yeah. him walk away. I remember watching him with the Niners too when I first started really watching NFL coaching tape and had access to it and all the different things they do with him and Vernon Davis. He had an incredible career and I, I really hope he gets he gets his due in history. What is it? What does his due in history mean? You think, like Ring of Honor, Titans vibes? What are we talking here? I I think so. I mean, when you look at what he did for that franchise, leading them in catches, yards, touchdowns, all of that, but also just you know, you guys touched on it. How he changed the tight end position. You didn't really see athletes like him, tight ends that could really run like that uh, when he broke into the league in 2006. And now you see those guys all the time. So he was really ahead of his time and and was a part of changing the position. Yeah, uh, Hamilton, I got a car yesterday. That's the big news today. Oh my God, that is terrifying. <laughs> I find it, I don't have like furniture as much, but I have, no, 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 no. We have a picture of what? I didn't send you guys a picture of my car. What? Ah! <laughs> Dumb and dumber, that's a great photo of me. Thank you, whoever picked, who picked that photo? Oh, thanks, Conrad, you sweetheart. What a beautiful photo of Matthew Hamilton and a crap <laughs> photo of me. Uh, I went, I've never been to a car dealership. That's all that matters. Believe it or not, never been to a car dealership. Went there thinking it'd take me, I don't know, 45 minutes to figure out. Took me, I, I didn't test drive a car until like an hour and a half in. I'm sitting there and they were lovely, lovely people. Six and a half hours, I, and you know me, I have, I have the least patience of any human yeah. that's ever been on the planet. Uh, yeah. And they somehow gave gave me a car. I felt like I cheated the system. <laughs> <laughs> somehow, it, it, I'm surprised there's in this state of emergency in the in the state of California right now. Yeah, that is just absolutely terrifying. It, uh, so I was t I test drove three. Is that like normal? You know, well, how, I don't know how you're how many you're supposed to test drive. I went by myself, which was so stupid of me. But they were they were they were wonderful, uh, and they're like you know talking about the Chargers with me. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna get a good deal. This is gonna be great. Uh, but we start test driving cars, and I drove like a really big one first, and I went over the first right I took went over the curb. Went right over the curb. And of course they have me with like this really good looking British guy who like doesn't understand my sarcasm whatsoever. Like I'm telling him I'm a terrible driver. I go on the curb and he's like, you know, he's sweating a little bit, like he's loosening his necktie. It was like being in a driver's mm -hmm. test, which I've also never taken, but it's what I imagined it would be like. And he's got like a clipboard and he just goes, it's okay, it's all wheel drive. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And he's like bracing himself to whatever. Anyway, I get this car finally. I leave six hours later, I'm nauseous because I hadn't eaten anything and then I'm driving home uh, 
which I didn't expect. I didn't even expect, expect to get a car, and it was a lease, and it was. I learned so many things. It was crazy. I got, I got car insurance. I felt like such an adult yesterday. And then in Beverly Hills, before you get to sunset, on by the Beverly Hills Hotel. If you guys have ever been in this situation, tweet me at Up and Adams Show or at Hey K Adams. There's, I'm not kidding you, Hamilton. There is a nine-way stop sign. It's got to be oh, nine, at least nine. And there's no rhyme or reason. So, of course, I'm not an aggressive driver at all. I'm like, when do I, cars are beat to 6 nah, p.m. I can't cars picture are, you being aggressive at all. I wasn't. Nah. I'm not an aggressive driver at all. I'm like, you tell me when to go and I'll go. So I'm out my window like, hey, are you going next? Like, are you? I was an absolute disaster. And I'm just, you know, I bought my own coffin yesterday. It's fun. I just remember when you revealed to me that rather than parallel park, you will get out of your car, ask a stranger yeah. on the street to jump in yeah. and park the car for you, yeah. which was the craziest thing I've ever heard, I'm, and I still don't believe it. I am a uh, I am a steward of Good Samaritanship, and I just think that's how you should look at such a thing. It was New York City, pandemic. I sure. had to rent a car. I drove to Chicago somehow in one piece, and I just can't, I can't parallel park. So I, what I do is I casually double park, I bring out the smile, and I say, "Hey, Miss, would you? Do, I can't parallel park. Can you par like? I'm in an emergency situation. Can you parallel park my car, sir? You look like you can. You look like you. You're a good parallel parker. And then they come and they they do it for me. And I say, "Okay, it's like having a valet without having to pay." Yeah. Well, I hope you also have a low jack. Yeah. That whole tip. That this whole uh, tip uh, show we just did here is because we had a graphics issue. So this isn't what oh. we usually talk about here on the show. But I am very excited. <laughs> Uh, to have a car, and by very excited, I mean I was miserable, and I don't like it, and I will be back in New York very shortly. Okay. Okay, so we're going to talk about some things. We talked to Lanny Walker. We obviously have Thursday Night Football to get into, but there's some teams that we need to, to talk about. So uh, let's get to a few of those as we play the hits and sort of chew on what some of these teams are doing. Uh, if you look at the Denver Broncos, I, you know, and we're taking this from a musical lens. I love music, love going to concerts. It's the only thing I've really done since I've been here in L.A. They need a rebrand, re rebrand these Broncos, right? What they're doing right now is not working. It is a disaster. Three losses in a row. The entire team looks in disarray. And I think I conjure Machine Kelly. Okay. This works, right? Kids love this stuff. But he used to be a rapper. And now he's leaning heavily into what you're hearing, this pop punk stuff, right? So he starts yeah. dating Megan Fox. All of a sudden, he's an icon. The Broncos need to pull an MGK and rebrand. They need to reinvent themselves entirely, the coach, the quarterback, the weapons, uh, and maybe do a rehaul. That's where I am with this team. It was worth the wait for those graphics, first of all. Uh, second of all, I, I enjoyed MGK's rap. Um, you did? You know, yeah, I, I was into it. I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't quite ready for the rebrand, but you're right. He's, he's feeling, as you said, the kids, the kids these days, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're really enjoying it. Uh, but I agree with you. I think the Broncos, um, Broncos could definitely use some rebranding right now. Um, you hit on it. You hit on it earlier in the show with when it comes to Nathaniel Hackett and the decision he has to make. And I think you really have to honestly evaluate what's going on with Russell right now. And I was looking at the tape. I was watching. He's not yeah. hitting open receivers. Too much. That's too much. Very on Russell. Kelly. Okay. Too he, much MGK. Yeah. Right. So he, so it, start, it, start that part again. He was what with the receiver? Yeah, so I was watching the tape and looking at all the open receivers he's missing. That's not Russell Wilson. And I went over to Next Gen Stats to take a look to see if there was any data that backed up. And look at this. Next Gen defines an open receiver as a target who has three or more yards of separation from the nearest defender. Okay. The Broncos lead the entire league. Their receivers are open on 58.4% of their targets. And that means those guys are getting open. Jerry Judy, you can see, you can tell why he's so frustrated on the sidelines, why that video is out there of him, you know, basically throwing a tantrum on the sidelines because he's getting open so much and Russell's just not able to get those guys to the ball right now. And it's not because we know, it's not because Russell's not a good quarterback. I really think that shoulder is a huge factor. So at some point in time, if you're in Nathaniel Hackett, I agree with what you said, Kay. I think you really have to think about sitting him down, not just to protect Russell's health, but you have to wonder if even a Brett Rippon with uh, can get the ball to oh. those wide open guys better than Russell can with with 
his health status right now. Yeah, I want to let's do the Packers here. Um, and great points. I don't know those next gen stats, but good call on that. And you know, thank you for the MGK. But let's talk about the Packers because to me, you know, they they're like the old school, right? They're sort of OG. They've got a future Hall of Fame quarterback. It's not working. They've lost two in the row to two New York teams. Uh, and they're on different wavelengths. I think they need some fresh blood in there. They need to collab. Like when you have a star in music and it's like they need to do sort of like the star is born kind of Bradley Cooper, Lady Gaga vibe, right? So I think Billy Cyrus is the good comparison comparison for this yes because he had let's be honest he had the 90s in a choke hold before this yeah. song right that's what he was uh, he was all the rage he was america's sweetheart but it, the act kind of ran out so then he pairs up with lil nas x <laughs> old town road perfect mixture classic and new billy ray cyrus feature on the song and it was unlikely but it catapulted him back into the spotlight the Packers need to pair up with another weapon. I'm talking Odell. That's what I want to see. Your thoughts on the Packers? I agree. And, uh, you know, Lil Nas X wasn't the only new young blood that Billy Ray Cyrus is pairing up with. I'm not going to get into all that. <laughs> um, but you're right. I, I, I'd love to see them go after an OBJ. I think that's what Aaron Rodgers was calling for uh, in that sound bite about having to simplify the offense because I don't think they have the guys right now to do everything he wants to do. I also think they just have to stick with the run game. They have the fourth most efficient run game in the NFL right now, and I think they're too quick to abandon it sometimes. So I hope they can make that move for OBJ and also rebrand their philosophy a little bit and stick with that run game. Yeah. Uh, you're, I mean, we want Odell to go to the Packers. Our next guest, and Sarushi, if you can just follow me, can we pop up our next guest side by side with Matt Hamilton? Because the beard game delivers. <laughs> Like Eric Weddle's coming out. Eric Weddle, this is a guy, yeah, oh, man, we can't do the screen, the half screen. But Eric Weddle's the guy who wants Odell to stay in L.A. I know that much. Eric Weddle joining us after this. He says, no, don't go to Green Bay. We've got Eric Weddle on the show after this. From confetti to the carpool lane, that's our next guest, a Super Bowl champion, Rams, Ravens, Chargers, superstar, best friend to our show. He comes on every week, a family member here at Up and Adams, Eric Weddle. Hello. Hey, how's your morning going? It's going very well, thank you. A little coffee. I had a there little, we go. Uh, little morning pastry. routine. How about you? What's your morning routine? Uh, <laughs> just get up and start going. Get up. Wake my oldest up at six and start making her breakfast, then make make the lunches for the other kids. Then I, I take her early uh, to school at by seven. And then basically from seven to about 820, I'm in the car dropping kids off <laughs> back and forth. So OK, tell me what was for breakfast and what did you pack for lunch? Give me the details. OK, so uh, Brooklyn wanted avocado toast, so I made her some fresh avocado toast. Uh, <laughs> she likes all that. Then I made uh, sandwiches, chocolate and honey. It's the it's wow. the hazel. Nutella. Hazel, Nutella. Yeah, Nutella. Yeah, we, we call it chocolate because that's one of the very few things any of my kids will eat. Uh, some grapes, uh, an orange. Uh, I gave them a, someone sent us crumble cookies, so I split it in four, <laughs> so everyone got a little fourth of a cookie, a protein bar, and I think I gave him some Chex Mix along well, with that. Well, that's a lot. So, what are you, raising offensive linemen over there? It sounds like a lot of food. It's a long day of school for them, and Brooklyn usually has volleyball practice after, oh. so she needs a little extra food. Usually I give her an extra drink, and so it's just long days for them, and our kids are active on the go, so usually the whole thing's eaten eight when, when they get home. And that means so are you. It's so funny to think like if I were to pick what you would give, you know, your teammates, your kids, even whatever, it's like a, a Slim Jim, uh, like a couple a couple raw eggs to chug. So, like, so my son gets beef jerky every time. He gets beef yeah, jerky. Some he's whey, the unique one. <laughs> some whey protein, like some yeah. oh, a leather yeah. strap, something to chew on. Like who, who he's knows? Got like, a, yeah. He's got his protein shakes that he drinks uh, to, to try to keep that, keep the weight up. 
That's for so football amazing. Season. The fact you're, that you're putting grapes in a little Ziploc bag really yeah. just made my entire day better <laughs> to know that. Uh, not only that, I have to cut them, you know, so they fit in the little, you know, the half, the yeah. half bag, not the sandwich yeah. bag. So it's it's a little bit of work, you know. I'm not I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but yeah. you know, I take my job very serious in the morning. So you're, what's what's like your least favorite chore around the house? What's laundry, for okay. sure. Uh, Chanel holds that down. I don't mind doing the dishes. I don't mind cleaning up, but laundry, especially the socks, and it's I just leave it. I, if I have to like fold the towels, I'm good at folding towels and trying to di dif differentiate the, the the girls' clothes. I mix them up all the time, and if there's a bunch of socks, I just leave them at the bottom. Like I'm not doing it. You're, they're just goners. Yes. But socks yeah, are part of the team. That that's like saying like <laughs> yeah. you're leaving your kicker, your punter, your special. Like, come on, like practice squad's part of the vibe too. Like, you can't just leave they them are. behind. They are, but in the Weddle household, they're <laughs> they are a complete and utter dismay on the other side of the house. Like, don't they're not even allowed in my house. This, n no socks at the Weddle <laughs> residence. Who knew? Uh, if you guys have questions for Eric Weddle, hit us up at Up and Adam Show. Uh, I think we should talk a little football in, uh, next Let's at this point it. in the program. Now, your former yeah. team, the Baltimore Ravens, 3-3. Three and three. This past game, the third time this season that they've blown a double-digit lead. What is one thing this Ravens defense needs to do to avoid this issue going forward? Well, I, th I, I feel like over the last couple of weeks, they've – Tighten things up in the secondary. I think the communication has been better. Uh, the big plays have been limited, and hence why they've they've played well over the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's just unfortunate. The the three ways they've lost uh, is just uncharacteristic, right? Uh, not just of a Baltimore Ravens team, but just of a a, a well coached uh, top team in the league. Like it's just you know. The, the mistakes that are happening in late game situations are something that needs obviously needs to be addressed and to be worked on and understand the how serious these games are and you, you don't want to look back at the end of the season uh, that you're one game out of a one or two seed or you're right. one game out of a division and maybe you make the playoffs or you don't because you didn't execute when you, you need to execute the most and that's at the end game situations two minute uh, the communication like Everything happens throughout a game, but the most important times are at the end of the half and in the fourth quarter. And you know the old saying, there's four or five plays that determine a game. Yeah, I get all that. But if you're not playing your best ball at the end of the game and playing sound fundamental football, you're not going to have a chance. So I, I think they just got to continue reeling that, those things in and, and hence those importance uh, issues. And listen, the bottom line is you can't give up big plays and you can't turn the ball over when the game's on the line. And they all know that, and Lamar knows that, and he'll he'll make those corrections and be good, better, be better from it. Yeah, and Baltimore. I mean, this is, this is the only stat you need to know is that your team, your former squad, thirty-one and two in games they've led by at least ten points in the second half since Jackson took over Jeez. back in twenty eighteen. So That's you're crazy. not kidding. Like, just figure they need to figure it out, or we could just give credit to your guy Winkers because. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Wink. I mean, you know, you know, Wink was gonna gonna have his. Uh, his boys ready to play. The defense played hard and shoot. I mean, the at the end of the day, they made made the plays at the end of the game. The defense came up big with that that interception and then the strip sack by Thibodeau at the end of the at the last series of the game to to put the game away. Uh, it was it was great for Wink. Obviously, a bummer for myself as a mm -hmm. as a proud alum of the Ravens and supporting them. So. Uh, but hey, that's life. That's football. That's the that's the league. And at any moment, if you don't play great week in and week out, you'll get beaten this league. I mean, that's the bottom line. It's so true. Really good defensive performances again in week six. What stood out to you? Gosh, I, I looked at there were a couple low low game low point performances, but I got to tip my hat uh, to Mike Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, the proud tradition and and what they stand for culturally as an organization and, and they put their foot down and said, what that was last week is not us. We're gonna take that, we're gonna be a prideful group and come out and really set the tone from the onset against the Bucks who got, you know, they're playing not as good of football as, as we all expect them mm -hmm. to be, but they're still Tom Brady led team. And to bounce back and to hold that team four for 14 on third down, uh, li limit them to around 300 yards of total offense you know, 70 yards of rushing, like that's 
that's just impressive work from letting the floodgates open the yeah. week before against the Bills. So I give my tip my hat to the Steelers, Mike Tomlin. <laughs> I love him. I, I respect him. I admire him as a head coach and as a leader, uh, the success he's had over the course of, you know, over a decade. So, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, best defensive performance uh, this past week. We love to see it and missing some stars at that. And not easy for you as a, you know, a proud alum, as you say, of the Ravens. <laughs> Look at you giving love to your uh, hey, you biggest know, rival. I like I that. Respect, respect the game, babe. I, I, I tell it how it is. So Steelers, Steelers had a great performance. All, all love to them this past week. You, you spent a lot of time with the Chargers. They're four and two after this win. And now they're tied with the Chiefs for first place in the AFC West. It's the same record. Is the level of play the same between the two, though? I, uh, you know, I, I res <laughs> these coaches, man, across the league get in these weird infatuations with the data and analytics and make, make decisions that are just so poorly, I think. And Chargers, case in point, they get lucky again. Uh, fortunate, I should say, mm -hmm. made a play, ball, <laughs> ball bounces up. But the week before in Cleveland, you're going for it fourth and two at midfield when Cleveland has no timeouts left with 50 seconds left in the game. I mean, that's there is zero reason to go for that and give Cleveland a chance. So, so they're four and two. They should be three and three or maybe two and four. Uh, but I do look at the level of their team, their athlete, you know, their ability, the guys they have on their squad. It is a talented team. No one's denying that. They're going to get Keen Allen back. Hopefully Bosa back. Uh, you know, Slater's out. That's a huge loss to their offense line. But at the end of the day, they got Herbert, and he's had his injuries and whatnot. They're not at the level of the Chiefs, but that's why you play full season. And if they can get healthy and play good football and make good decisions as a coaching staff, uh, I think they're as good as anyone when they, when they put it all together. Eric Weddle, like he said, says it like it is about those Chargers. And the Chiefs, of course, look great and are very well coached, aren't making Jeez. those decisions. Yep. Kelsey, uh, oh my gosh. Is, is he like the ageless wonder? Like each year he gets better and better? And Kelsey? Not, like, unless he's playing Derwin James. I mean, yeah, getting body slammed. <laughs> but, geez, five catches, four touchdowns must be nice. And just <laughs> show up, score touchdowns every week and move on. Nice. I think he might be looking at you and saying, I want to make avocado toast and slice uh, grapes for a living. You he know might, what? <laughs> I have a great life, too. So, you know, some people may admire and want this. And yeah. others who are retired has-beens would like to have five catches and four touchdowns. So, so, what is this retired has? I'm not going to let you say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, let's talk about tonight. We've got Saints-Cardinals. Both are two and four. Woof. I think it's a – I know you're going to say it's too early. Must win like, game. You don't think so? The whole season's on the line. You don't think so? Uh, two and four. Two and four. I mean, obviously, these both these teams aren't very good, so – to say they're going to have a dramatic turnaround by the end of the season, I just don't see it. Like, uh, they, they haven't shown me enough. Uh, obviously, the injuries on the Saints has had a huge impact yep. on their team. So I, I, I think they're overall better team. I, I think they'll win tonight. The, something's not right with the Cardinals. They haven't been right since week one of the season. They haven't been able to adjust and rebound. Kyler Murray doesn't look like the same quarterback. So there is disconnect. I don't know where they, they trade for Anderson. That's What's that going to do? I'm not sure uh, how that is mm -hmm. going to fit all the pieces. Uh, getting D-Hop back, maybe bring some energy, some life, obviously some big playability. But uh, that's a tough situation. It's hard to gauge where they're at because they just haven't looked good. And I don't see – at all of a sudden turn around where the saints they have a talented roster they have good skiing good coach they know who they are uh you know with winston and dalton you know is it really matter who's in there i don't really think it matters uh they're not one's not that much better than the other they're probably they're just good solid quarterbacks i think Taysom hill more so than that his dynamic that he brings at quarterback and running back and all these other positions having him healthy getting kamara in there you know so I, I think the ceiling is high for, higher for the Saints. Wow. Hence which, why I picked the Saints tonight. Hence why you picked the Saints tonight. And what's not being said is, you know, of course, the coach about the, the, the talk about the coaching. 
out in the desert because you have all this talent. DeAndre Hopkins coming back. If, if it doesn't turn around, and it is, you know, Kyler played like a different guy when D-Hop was there. If it changes like that, it just shows how valuable Hopkins is. But if it mm -hmm. doesn't change, it shows uh, that that coaching seat, unfortunately, might be getting a little warm for Cliff Kingsbury out there. At least that's the talk around the league. Uh, okay, let's hit the grit list. And well, first, he, he just ahead. he just he just signed in his uh, he's signed till 27. So. And so you think right. he, you think do you think Cliff Kingsbury is the coach next year if they can, if if they have a season like they're having? I mean, owners don't just want to throw away money, so uh, they're they're smart businessmen for a reason. So uh, I, I think. I think they'll get they'll give him another one. You know, he's 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 had positive years each yeah. year. This is his third or fourth year. I don't really know, but uh, you know, so I, I I don't I think it's I, I definitely think he's per, perception on the hot seat. But yeah, uh, at the end of the day, I don't think unless there's a, a dream hire that's out there that they want, then yeah, I could see that if there's one or two guys. But if that's not the case, they're gonna keep him around. I mean, they Sean, don't throw away is money. Sean Payton a dream hire? Sean's not going there. Why not? I just don't see the appeal in that. I think he's got the Cowboys, maybe the Chargers, maybe. Kyler uh, Murray. Kyler Murray's appealing. Is I mean, the, we're talking talent at the quarterback spot. You're locked. I mean, you've got, he wants, you know, I would imagine influence. That, that I don't know if he'd have there because Kime and Bidwell are so close. It's, inter it's yeah. an interesting, you know, he's the bell of the ball. He, he is. And I, I think Sean's in a great spot that, He's not going to force himself or, or take something that he's not 100% committed and 100% yeah. feel like he can go win a Super Bowl with. So I just don't feel like that is the Cardinals. All right, let's hit the grit list. Grit list. Last grit week. List. Who was on? Remind me. We had B Wags is uh, number one, I believe. Woo! Yeah. And then the Nick Chubb amazing, incredible run for a <laughs> touchdown. And then. Derwin James oh, body yeah. slam on oh, yeah. T. Kelsey. Look at that fan. Uh, Look at that three. photo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, about, how about the fan trying to like file a complaint and sue? Okay, we got right. coming out. We got we got Josh Allen hurdling Reed, who's a great safety, coming in there, taking a nice shot on the sideline. What does he do? He gets up. How many times do we see Josh Allen either deliver a blow, truck a defender, yep. or get tackled, and he gets up and smiles? Like, he's having the time of his life. <laughs> I just love the way they play. I love the Bills as a team and their leader, McDermott. And shoot, they have they have the top quarterback in the league right now. So, Hoyer, I mean, hit, that story is incredible. Crazy. How, how, how on earth are you not allowed to go on a plane ride, but now can go play 60 minutes in an NFL football game? I, I think that's A thousand miles. Contradicting themselves, but hey, the, the NFL has rules, and most of the rules don't make any sense, so it, it makes perfect sense. But to see that uh, drive 15 hours to join his team and play the entire game, doesn't miss a snap, lead that defense. I mean, him and Hyde, obviously Hyde not being out there, but he is uh, he is one of the ringleaders back there and yeah. keeps everything together, holds it together, and just an awesome player. Lazard, I mean, he made a couple of these Whoa. incredible plays up the sideline. I mean, this takes grit, this takes toughness, this takes uh, athleticism, this takes just a overall uh, uh, requisite, like, you know, this takes wow. just touch and feel. And not a lot of guys can do this on the sideline, not only to make the catch, but to take the hit and get to his feet inbound. So, I mean, clap this up and let's not even talk about the, the dime that a dropped through right here. I mean, just a nice little flick of the wrist, boom. Up the sideline, the shot doesn't even count. Doesn't matter. I'm catching this, moving on. But holy smokes, they needed about ten more of those plays to win that game. They are, they are struggling. <laughs> All right, let's update the grit list. Who makes it? Same list, same list. I, I felt, I felt those three last week were solid plays. Uh, nothing really jumped out of me, out at me throughout the week to to overtake these three. So we're gonna stick with our list and move forward to the to this Thursday night. Uh, a lot of special players playing each game week in and week out, but it's tough to make the grit list. It's man. tough. It's, you gotta, you gotta take you gotta out a fan. Great. You gotta have like a, a a charge against you, a lawsuit. That's how you make the, <laughs> the grit list. <laughs> you gotta do something special, out of the ordinary. Like, 
destroy a fan like we yeah. all wish we could have done destroy a fan place. break some yeah it's break someone's yeah. ankle like it's just the yeah. way it goes all right eric weddle get back to vacuuming and whatever the <laughs> hell you do all day Love it. we'll talk to you, eric weddle you're good the absolute best you. best good to see you we've got shams on okay we get it you're busy shams we get it you're scooping we understand we'll be back what a treat right now. We have lead NBA insider for The Athletic NBA. He's on a new show right here on FanDuel TV. Uh, he gets it earlier than I do. It's called Run It Back. It's Sham Sharania. Hey, Shams. Okay, what's going on? Congrats on your show. First of all, you were the first kind of one to start all this. So major congrats to you. And uh, I'm, I've been excited to keep along with what you've been up to as well. Yeah, the, um, the sacrificial lamb over here. We're both from Chicago. We'll get into that. We've got a couple of minutes here. How is the show so far? I know you only, you've only done a couple episodes, right? Yeah, we, so we've done three so far. Nice. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 10 a.m. Eastern time. I'm joined with Michelle Beadle, who's just amazing as a host, longtime uh, host on all various different yeah. uh, outlets. Chandler Parsons, a uh, longtime NBA player. Now he's on the other side in retirement. He's trying the media game out, doing a great job. And as well as Eddie Gonzalez, who's kind of a behind the scenes guy on camera. All right. uh, he does a podcast with Kevin Durant and myself. So I think it's a good blend of analysis, inside information, and, and just really uh, just, just conversations every single morning, Monday how to, does, uh, to Wednesday. How does one become an insider? Like, you went to New Trier, we get it, New Trier, Bougie McBooge over there in Chicago. You did I, your homework. You I, did your homework. I took the L downtown to go to Whitney Young for free all those years. That's what I did. I lived in Chicago. But about, but uh, I want to talk to you about what it, like, you don't go to school, you don't go to New Trier and then college and say, like, I'm going to be an NBA insider. How did you do that? So I grew up in Rogers Park, lived there for, for a few years, and then my family moved more uh, up north, Skokie, Wilmette, nice. Glenview, that, that kind of area. Went to New Church High School. And so for me, I loved playing basketball my whole life. And once I got cut in high school, it was like I had to figure out what I was going to do next. I wasn't going to be Michael Jordan and make it to the NBA <laughs> after getting cut in high school. So I had to figure out what my path was. I loved writing. I loved basketball. And I just combined my passions. I never thought I'd be on there. Never, never thought I'd be on with you. So I'm glad to be on and doing all this. And I always had kind of a thirst for what's going on behind the scenes. And so for me, I feel like I'm living out my dream every single day. What's like the biggest moment in your life? Because it takes you away from everything. It's 24 seven, like your phone has to be in your hand, like literally. What was it like a wedding, a birthday, like when you get have to get pulled away because you're like, excuse me, I have to deal with this. I mean, everything you could think of. It's happened at weddings. It's happened at family dinners. It's happened at, you know, my mom's birthday. It's, it's <laughs> happened at all times. Thankfully, family understands. You know, it's, it's, it's very often, you know, when if you're on a date or if you're, you know, yeah. in a classroom. Like for me, going, going to college at Loyola Chicago, you know, I would leave class for 15, 20 minutes at a time. And then everyone would <gasps> kind of look at me weird when I come back into in class. Like, what was this guy doing? Did he just like leave campus and then come back? So... Uh, that part was interesting when it's like outsiders, quote unquote, but I think my inner circle kind of understands. They're like, my, is he Superman? Is he Peter Parker leaving and then coming back? <laughs> that is crazy. And I can't imagine being on a date and being like, sorry, babe, Dwight Howard. Yeah, Dwight Howard's going to the Atlanta Hawks, babe. But yeah, get, get the extra, get the, uh, get the item before. on there. It's happened before. And I did not get a second. I, I did not get a second date, but it has happened. I actually left for like 30 minutes. Uh, but, you know, got to do what you got to do. It is I would it be is. like, this is the man of my dreams. I love this man. And you've broken those. <laughs> kind of stories you did break Dwight Howard uh, a, a former US president officially contracting COVID like you that's yeah we, I, we don't I, don't, have to talk. I don't know I don't know how much I want to speak on that one it was crazy when I when I put that tweet out I was actually in the bubble this is the most I've ever kind of spoken on that but I was in the bubble uh, in 2020 and I was like when is Secret Service gonna start knocking on my door like did I do something I wasn't supposed to do so I kind of just put that out there it was like one in the morning and went back to sleep so that was my night is that your biggest scoop uh, I don't know. I feel like the next one's always the biggest. Um, kind of the one that for me, I, I would say, really started, I think, a lot was when I broke Luol Deng getting traded from the Bulls to the Cavs in January 2014. I think that was kind of, you know, the moment where the door opened a little bit. And then it was, what what was I going to do when, yeah. the, when, you know, when the door opened? And so uh, that was a fun one. Um, obviously, everything that happened in 2020, just because everyone didn't know what was going on. So to be able to provide information throughout that year was was cool as well. And and very vital for, for me and my job, something I never thought I'd be doing. Yeah. Um, so for me, the next one's always the biggest. Shams, will you come back? I really want to get more into this. this is so inside. Like, I think you're, you, I want you to write a book, honestly, but not <laughs> until we get some of that stuff. Uh, quickly, quickly, I need an NBA team. I'm, you know, Bulls, whatever. 
Give me an NBA team I should root for. Yes, I'm sure you're already big on the Bulls, and Zach Levine's out. Big win last night. DeMar DeRozan's playing well. But to me, the underdog to root for, the Pelicans. And I know, you know Pat McAfee, our friend, big Pelicans guy, big Zion guy. So I, if I'm you, I'm rooting for the Pelicans. Do you like, the, do you like football? Uh, I mean, I play fantasy. Uh, I, I used to like football a lot more and baseball, but I'm more of a basketball Okay, we, guy. we have to have you back. Shams, on Run It Back, watch it right here on FanDuel TV. You are awesome. Go Chicago and go Pelicans. I'm into it. That's my team. Team of record. That's my squad.